Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. It's the last study of this week, which is surprising that this week has gone by so fast because it is actually Thursday, uh, December 21st. And uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful uh, for this week and the studies that we have had in the morning and the light that has come to us uh, through these studies. We know, Lord, that there is uh, your hand in our lives and uh, in every single way, not just in the understanding of truth, but in uh, the experiences that we have, the trials that we face. And we know, Lord, that we can trust you and all that you are doing. Like, give us guidance for our feet. Help us to make uh, the decisions we need to each day. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, just uh, while, while you're there, yeah, uh, you have there the top, and in those times during the Fifth Syrian War, war Civil yeah. War, first day, first month in 2024, the first day, first month, 2030 yeah. is 2,187 days. Yeah. Um, what I see now there is just thought back to Enoch when mm -hmm. he was born. If you add up the ages of the patriarchs when he was born, mm -hmm. it's uh, 2,187 years. Okay. So we have that number there. I don't know if you can apply anything to you up there. But also, as I was adding them up, them um, patriarchs, the first four add up to 1798. And then if you add the next one, Mahalalil, um, it takes you to 2025. Okay. And then you have Jared, 162, takes you to 2,187. Okay, interesting. The thing that would uh, be pertinent here, because you're dealing with, you know, Enoch and the different ages of the patriarchs, right? And we already mm -hmm. have there the 65, the 187, the 252, the 777. All of those things relate to what these this verse is about. Right. It re refers to our history. So we already have that there. And, and just that additional 2,187. So you're adding up all up. Uh, yeah, so Adam, Adam, he, Adam is 622. And so therefore you just add up. Yeah. So 622, that's that's that symbol uh, when Enoch is born. Yeah. OK. Do I add that? To it, or do I just start there? You're saying for me, so, that, that, so there's um, there's Adam and then there's Seth, he's 492, so he's 130 years less. And then okay. there's Enos, so, he's let's do the math here on 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 here. So, what do you want me to do to show this math? Okay, so Adam 622, okay, so 622, yeah, plus Seth 492. Now, 492, that's how old he is at the time. That's how old Seth is when, when Enoch was born. Okay, good. Yep. Enos, he's 387 years old, so 105 years left, less than Seth. Okay. And then uh, Cainan, he's 297, so that gives you 1798. Okay, that's nice. Yep. And then Mahanalil, he's 227. So that takes you to 2025. Okay. And then Jared 162. Okay. Now that is yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 227 is the 227th day of the year, I think, is uh, August 15 as well. Okay. Can, can you put this um, in, in a little bit of a document or something and uh, send it to me? And remember, use my my whatsapp that's um with my phone number okay okay yeah so so this is really interesting because what it's doing is it's taking because when enoch is born so he's going to live 65 years and then he's going to have um methuselah right is that how it works and then there's 187 years to lamech mm -hmm. right? and 65 plus 187 is of course 252 so it relates to the 2520 and um and then, of course, you have the 777 years of Lamech. So what we see in this verse is 
because we put in there that first day of the first month. So we're saying in those times. So this is this civil war. We're saying the fifth Syrian war is the civil war. And it's symbolized by this period of time from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, which is 2,187 days. So here it's tying us to these symbols that we go all the way back to 622 AM, right? When Adam is 622. And we have all of the ages of those patriarchs at that time, right? So it, it, it's pretty fascinating because it relates exactly to what we're doing here, right? Because we're recognizing with these different Hebrew numbers, one is we take the sons of the robbers and that's gonna give us, you know, one, one, two, one plus the six, five, three, zero. It's gonna give us the number Sheba from the seven times in Leviticus 26. So it's gonna, it's going to give us that information. And I'm not sure why I got two equal signs here. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. But you can see how this relates to the 777 structure, right? That's how we're understanding this. And then, of course, of thy people, the papacy, right, shall exalt themselves. So to establish the vision. And so we looked at exalt themselves to establish the vision. And we we have, um, so one is the vision is the chazon. So I just added this footnote a bit more detail, number 10, footnote number 10 near the bottom there. H2377 combines the 2300 days and the seven times with two sevens, right? So it symbolizes the seven times with these two sevens and the 70 weeks, right? 70 times seven. So 2377 is six years and 186 days. So if we are going to take 2377 and we're going to, to take it as a span of time, if we go from this first day of the first month in 2024, it's going to be, and let me see if I, how do I do that? So, um, cause I didn't actually do this yet. So we're going to go, so we got January 24th and we're going to go, um, what does it do there? Okay. So it doesn't quite do, it's going to go to the 26th day of the fourth month in 2030. That makes sense. You understand what, what, what's happening there? So we go from, cause we're taking years on, on our calendar. And so if we go 2377, it's going to bring us to the 26th day. It's July 28th, 2030, but it's going to be the 26th day of the fourth month in 2030. So it is, is that significant? You, you understand? Hopefully people understand what I'm doing. Now, normally it's 186 days from the first day of the first month to the t uh, 10th day of the seventh month. But in this case, and let me see here. So I'm just going to go back. So two, three, seven, seven. Just making sure I've done this all right. Um, so if I take two, three, seven, seven, I probably could show you me uh, doing this, but. So if I divide it by uh, 365 and a quarter, it gives me six and a half years, right? But more specifically, six years and 186 days. So once again, I'm just going to do this, make sure I'm doing this right. Um, 2024. And we're going from uh, the date is, what's the date we're supposed to go from? I think I did this wrong. Yeah, we're supposed to go from April 10th. I didn't count from April 10th, I don't think. Um, that's why. But it was interesting, the date I counted from, which, yeah. So that's going to bring me to, um, now, if I count there, because we're using calendar years, so I'll show you what I'm doing here. Now, this is going to bring me to the Feast of Tabernacles. If I count from the first day of the first month, so I'll just go back here. So this is the first day of the first month in 2024. That's that date that we looked at. Now we know it's six years to the first day of the first month in 2030, but those are not solar years. That's biblical years, right? So it's going to be April 5th. It's going to be five days. This is five days further along than it is in 2030, right? So it's going to be six years minus five days. <clears throat> But if I take 2377, 
that's going to bring me to the Feast of Tabernacles in 2030, which is October 13th. Now, normally it's six years and 186 days. You can see here, it brings me uh, six years and 186 days, but because I started, I'm counting those years as solar years, it's gonna bring me five days past the 10th day of the fifth month or 10th day of the seventh month. Does that make sense to people? Would it not be, uh, all right, okay, so it's uh, 186 from the minus five. I have to add years. five. I have to add five. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm five days less than six solar years because it's from the 10th of April to the 5th of April. So that's six solar years minus five days. So that makes it, right, this uh, 2187 days. And then, and then I have to um, add you know, 186 days. And it's going to give me two, two, three, seven, seven, right? So, so obviously I can't just add the 186. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just because there's five days less, left or less. So it ends up being, you know, once, once you work it out, it, it works out. So that's 2,377 days from the first day of the first month in 2024. Now it's the Feast of Tabernacles, which is significant, but it's also October 13th because the, because the 10th day of the seventh month is going to be October 8th. But even then, even whether we just count this span of time as a symbol, we can say it's six years plus 186 days. So that, that to me is pretty interesting. Now I know this is, um, you know, for people who aren't uh, used to doing math, though I think you guys are getting used to doing all this math stuff. So what, what we're saying here about this symbol in Daniel 11 verse 14, that this, this period of time, this 2,187 days as a symbol, give, brings us back to 622 AM to the ages of the patriarchs in that year that is added up as 2,187 years. So it, it, it ties together with Enoch, the 65, the 187, the 252, the 777, ties those all together. And so this would just be another confirmation that this verse is relating to our time, right? Now, as far as interpreting what this means, we, we have to look at everything. We have to look at all the clues that are here, all the things that we have studied, right? Now, we know the robbers of, the, of thy people or the sons of the breakers is going to give us also a number, which is going to be the number of... Uh, the seven times, right? Added together, it's going to be 7651, the Hebrew number, which is in Leviticus 26. Okay, so that becomes important. Uh, but it also ties us to these other verses, Jeremiah 711. Now, I know Dwight has looked at that, I think, or maybe it's the Ezekiel one. I can't remember. Because I thought you said it was Ezekiel 7. But um, looking, Yes, I'm looking at Ezekiel 7, yes. Okay, so... I don't know if that relates to this or not. But anyway, in Jeremiah 7:11, it's the verse that's quoted in Matthew 21:13, Mark 11:17, Luke 19:46, and John 2:16. Now, all of these verses contain the symbols of our line. 21 times 13 is 273, 11 times 17 is 187, and also 111 times 7 is 777. And then Luke 1946, well, not 19 and the 46 for the 65 years. Um, so we've got the 65 years, which goes back to Enoch. We have the 187 from Methuselah before Lamech, right? We got the 777 there. And then we have the 273 dealing with the Levites. And then we had that, those same two words, the son, as son, this time in a singular form, but still the same Hebrew number, 1121. That is a robber, again, singular, instead of plural, but 6530, six, six, still the same number. In, and a shedder of blood that doeth like to any one of these things. So we know this is Ezekiel 1810. 1810 is the number of years from 34 AD uh, to 1844. And if we add 710 to it, 
um, that's going to give us the 2520. So that's just the number of years from 677 to 34 AD is 710 years. So we have all of this in this phrase that's in this verse. So again, we can see that it relates to our line. Now, then we have to um, look at this, the, the robbers of these people, this group, the sons of the breakers. Now, they exalt themselves to establish the vision. So we looked at that. So that was the one where we took all of these and we added them together and we get 13727. And that gives us this date, June 7th, 1982. And from June 7th, 1982 to January 6th, 2020 is that period of time. Now, January 6th, 2020 is one year previous to the siege of Washington, D.C. But January 6th, 2020 is the date that's the symbol of the siege. So, so it has these two symbols, January 6th and the 10th day of the 10th month. It doesn't bring us to the year 2021. It's one year before, but it still would be significant as a symbol. So again, it relates to them exalting themselves to establish the vision. Now, if we take that as Rome, it's bringing us to this symbol. What, what would we see from that from January 6, 2020? Because there are two interpretations being proposed. One is that the breakers of thy people are not Rome, but are apostate Protestantism. So what do we think about that idea that because it's the sons of the breakers, that would refer like to, from a political point, sons is politics, but it would relate to the breakers are, are Rome. So this is the daughters of Rome, right? Which is the apostate churches. You know, what do we think about that idea? Does that fit if we look at the initial application rather than saying it's the papacy that's going to exalt itself to establish the vision, the papacy's support of wokeism? So does apostate Protestantism support wokeism in this history? Well, generally, they're conservative. Yeah. So when we're looking at them as the king of the north, as republicanism, we can see that, of course, there is a a a part of apostate Protestantism that now is accepting wokeism, but they're in a sense aligning themselves with the Democrats, right, with wokeism. But if this is a battle between the king of the north and the king of the south, and the south represents the Democrats, and the king of the north represents the Republicans, then would it make sense to say that the apostate Protestants are here exalting themselves to support wokeism. Is that what's happening in this history? And is that to establish the vision? So is apostate Protestantism supporting Egypt? Now, now maybe there is some way in which we could say that that's true, but it, it doesn't appear to be true based on what we know and what we understand about our history. That this is a battle basically between apostate Protestantism which has aligned itself with the king of the north, with republicanism, and Egypt, the king of the south, that the papacy has aligned itself with. Am I getting that wrong? Yeah, I would uh, still hold to the idea that the robbers here is uh, the Roman Catholic Church, or Rome mm -hmm. in some sense. But, and we're saying here that it's Rome because when it says they shall fall, this isn't just talking about pagan Rome. It's also talking about papal Rome, right? Because it's it's looking down the long ages. They exalt themselves here to establish the vision, which is Chazon. So that's from 723 BC to 1798. We know that that's both desolating powers. And, and Rome needs to exalt itself to establish that vision. Because if it doesn't, then you don't have all of this history. But we can take that that vision and we can see in it the 2300 days and the 70 weeks and the 777 structure are all tied together in that symbolic number, 2377. And so we're saying that it's representing two desolating powers in our history, 1989 to the Sunday law. But they shall fall. So in, in the application, pagan Rome falls, papal Rome falls. And that's going to be in our history the close of probation of the seven last plagues. 
Now, so another point I really want to address that I think is a major problem in our understanding generally about our history. So, so Colin sent me an email, and and in that email he's going to one is he's going to talk about our history as the anti-type, right? So our history is not the anti-type. What we're in right now is a type because we have time attached to it. And this time is something that is typical, not anti-typical. Because if it was anti-typical, then we would be disregarding Ellen White's counsel regarding time setting. So when we, even before we had November 9th, as soon as I heard that the movement is going to be time setting, the only way that I could reconcile that is to say that the time that we are setting is in connection with time that we were placed in. And the one who placed us in that time was Parminder back in 2012. So in 2012, Parminder is going to make a prediction about a Sunday law in 2014. And he sets the wheel in motion, so to speak, for all the things that that occur within our lines that are related to time. And so this movement works out in sort of a, a simulation, let's put it that way, computer simulation, of what is going to happen in the future. And it all, all occurs within this movement. Now, external events occur that help mark these dates but these external events are not the fulfillment of the prophecies of a big line, right? So we know that we haven't come to midnight yet, right, on the line that Jeff has, because Jeff has 9-11, midnight, midnight, Christ, Sunday. And we, we've concluded that we're still before midnight. But we have these other midnights. We have raffias and paneums. But the raffia that happened on Jan, January 6, 2021, is not the raffia on Jeff's line, right? It's not midnight. And, and what's going to happen in the pamnium on our line that we're looking at, that we're seeing as typical, is not going to be the midnight cry on Jeff's line. So we, we ended up believing that we were in that history when we were just in a typical history. And that has, explains everything, everything about our lines, everything about what this movement is about and all of the problems associated with the conflicts that are going on in this movement, that these are all typical, not anti-typical. Everything points to that. So I'm not really sure why this isn't understood, even though I've been saying it since, well, at least since 2017, but even before that, I had understood the typical nature of our line, not in all the detail that we do now, but I understood it that, but especially once we had Samuel Snow's letters, that to me clearly showed that this movement was Samuel Snow and that this movement had to, a work to do that was not on that big line. And definitely when you look at Ellen White's line, she just has the Sunday line. She doesn't have, you know, Rafi and Paniam and 9-11 and all those things as part of the line, other than just in the sketchy idea that the first and second angel's messages have to be repeated and that the second angel joins with the third. But her line doesn't contain the waymarks that we have on our line. And Jeff, for a time, placed those waymarks together, right? So he had put these together without understanding that ours was a zoom in, right? And Parminder did everything he could to obscure this idea of how we now look at the lines, right? So he was constantly trying to create something that we don't see in Millerite history. So we believe that Millerite history guides us in how we understand these lines. So if we're going to take Daniel 11, so, um, so I'll let you look at this here. This is the email from Colin. Okay, so he says the type may be something like this. So he means maybe, not maybe. And at the time of the end, 1798, shall the king of the south, France, push at him the papacy, the king of the north, right? And the king of the north, the papacy in the USA, so I'm not sure what RR means, Ronald Reagan maybe, shall come against him in 1989, the USSR. 
like a whirlwind, right? The chariots with horsemen. So, so we would agree with that. Now we can say what we've been saying is that 1798 is Raphia and 1989 is Paneum, right? Though those are typifying Daniel 11 verse 40, which we sort of should have known because it's so logical that you have the king of the south, that's Raphia conquering the king of the north, and then Paneum, the king of the north, conquering the king of the south, right? So, but we never quite put it in those terms, okay? And he shall also enter into the glorious land. So the glorious land is the USA. So when it says he, of course, we know that that's the king of the north. And many countries shall be overthrown, right? And Egypt represents the world. So, so he takes this. Then he says the antitype may be something like this. So he says at the time of the end, November 3rd, 2020. Now, would we mark November 3rd, 2020 as the time of the end? In, if we're going to take 1798, right? So that's what he would say is that represents 1798. Would, would we do that? Is there a reason to mark November 3rd, 2020 as 1798? Or not, there's November 3rd, parallel with 1798. So that's the election. What would we normally do here if we're going to put it into our time? Where would we mark the time at the end? Now he's going to have the King of the South being Biden pushing at Trump, the King of the North. So he's going to have that um, November 8th, 2022, right? So why November 8th, 2022 and on? That's going to be the midterms, right? But Okay, well that that is the midterms, but why why would Biden be pushing at Trump at the midterms? That that's not logical to me. Yeah. But also November third, twenty twenty, is being the time of the end. Uh, I don't think we have any symbols that can place that as the time of the end that I can think of. Now we would need to put this into our seven 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 structure, right? So we'd have to have the time of the end sometime before this. I mean. November 19th, you know, so we'd have to decide how this line is structured, which I'm not really sure how this whole line is structured of, of what he's suggesting. But in here, we would need January 6th, 2021 as Raphia. So, I mean, that to me would be a much better place to put Raphia. But then I also don't know about the time in the end here. I don't think we would. We could put the time of the end as November 9th, 2019, maybe. But we also have to remember that the king of the South is really, I mean, Biden is there as the representative. But we have to have what happens in 2021, January 6th. Because that's when he pushes at Trump. So, you know, maybe not November 8th, 2022. So, so we would look at Paneum as something still future in this sense, because we have a raffia and everything that we're, because we're going to say that's January 6th, 2021. Um, the Paneum is still future in this. But here the, the king of, so now the one who enters into the, to the glorious land, the king of the north, does this, does this kind of follow? Because if Biden, um, you know, the king of the north, Trump comes against Biden, like a whirlwind, I just can't make any sense out of this. So can somebody help me? What is he trying to say? Does anybody understand this? I'm having difficulty. Yeah. So so I'm having difficulty. I, I've looked at it a number of times, and I thought I kind of figured where he was going. But as I discuss it, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. So, I mean, there's some way in which we could do this. Now, Now, part of what he's... So, and then he has this part dealing with uh, Pope John Paul II. So, of course, he's addressing the Pope John Paul II. The first time he visits the White House is going to be October 6th, 1979. Now, we have the Pope there and we, you know, we have the United States. But if we're going to deal with the time of the end in this history, if we're going to put a date, it would be the date that we have for meeting, uh, Ronald Reagan, when the Pope meets Ronald Reagan. Because Jimmy Carter, as a president, we haven't put him in here. He's not really seen, right, in in prophecy. So 
We could say the Pope visits the White House and that has some significance. It's a step in there. But um, as far as October 6th, I think I put it in here. Yeah, so October 6th, um, it doesn't really have any significance. Right. I couldn't I couldn't find anything for it. But the first date here, you can see at the bottom, six, seven. So that's June 7th, 1982. If we go back to 1798, now we know the Pope's taken captive on February 15th. But if we go back to February 11th, when birthday uh, takes the the city captive. And what what's the city again that he goes into? Um, he's taken to Valence. It's called what? He's, he's, uh, he's taken to Valence. Yeah, okay. Valence, is that the name? How do you spell that? B A L A N C. A N C. Eventually he gets, that's where he ends up when he goes and dies. But it takes him quite a while. He's sort of like stopping off for spaces on the way. Okay. So, Anyway, if we count from February 11th. Now, February 11th is already a symbol that we have. It's connected to um, Stephen's birthday, right? But if we count from February 11th to the first time that Pope John Paul II meets Ronald Reagan, it's going to be 67,320 days. And that is 187 prophetic years. And then if we count from this date, right, that's the one where we add up, he exalt himself to establish the vision. And that's going to bring us to January 6, 2020, 13,727 days, right? So that's going to tie that together. So I would think based upon the numbers and based upon how we just think logically about the time of the end, this attaches the time of the end in 1798 to the time of the end in our time. So that's going to be uh, this June 7th, uh, 1982. Now that's going to be um, 2,712 days to November 9th, 1989. Now, I don't know. That, what's this. Yeah, Stephen? Um, sort of. Reminds me of the 27th day of the 12th month. So you had that being mentioned in Jeremiah. Is it uh, Kings, maybe? Yes. One, so, one, one, one day it says the 25th, the first says the 27th. So when Jehoiachin is released, it's going to be in the 37th year of his captivity. He's actually in captivity, technically, uh, for 36 years and three weeks or something like that, right? Three, four weeks. Now, when he's released in, it's an Isaiah, right? Is it in Isaiah? No, not Isaiah. Um, Jeremiah? Jeremiah 15. Yes. Jeremiah Jeremiah 15. uh, Jeremiah mentions it, and he says there it's the 25th day of the 12th month. Yes. And then in Kings, it says it's the 27th day of the 12th month. But if you read it, the verses are actually talking about two different things. So one is talking about uh, when he's released. The other one, I think, is actually when he's, you know, presented. So there's there's two days difference. But the 27th day of the 12th month, is there any other significance to that? Okay, so it's just that span of time. We're going to just say that 2,712 days is a span of time that it's a little over seven years. It's going to be seven years and about 150 days. Let me see. Seven years and 155 and a quarter days. In prophetic time, it'd be seven years and 192 days. So anyway, I don't think as a span of time that it's uh, it has a symbol. But it is the, the time from when... Pope John Paul first meets Reagan to the fall of the Soviet Union. So it's going to be seven years and 155 days. And then the Soviet Union falls. Of course, we get the symbol that leads us to to January 6th. And January 6th, 2020 is the 10th day of the seventh month. 
So, so I think these are all highly significant that we can, we can connect 1798 to 1989. One is we can do that with 119 years just on, on its own. But with these symbols, we can bring it to very specific dates. Now, one of the things that we looked at, which I just want to touch on again, is because we have Stephen's birthday in there. Of course, it's you know, before he's born because he wasn't born in 1798 or before that, but the February 11th date. And we do have my birthday in there as well. So we noted before, if we took the expressions, the king of the north and the king of the south, and we added up uh, the digits for those, we have, let me see, it should be here on this document. Okay, so the king of the north and the king of the south so the king of the north produces a number which is 30 years and point uh, 0.8172 years. So it's 30 years plus that many, that many parts of a year, right? Hundreds, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands of a year, right? Does that make sense to people? So if I take those numbers, 11, 2, 5, 6, it's going to be 30 years, it's almost 31 years. So I'll show you this calculation again. I know it helps people if you can see me calculating these things. So I'm taking this number, which is uh, the king of the north is 6828, and I'm adding it to the word king, 4428. You must start it, teacher. Oh, okay, I'll just add another. 6,000 here. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm terrible at doing this. So we get this number. Oops, I think I left out. No, that doesn't work. I have to do it right. 6828 plus 4428. And I'll get this number, 11,256. And I divide that by 365.25. And I get 30 years, and you can see that the first four digits are the digits of 8172. So that's the digits of the 18th of July, 2020, if you kind of switch the one and the eight around, right? So we're familiar with this already, this idea. And the 2718 and the 2187 and all these different things, right? Now, of course, that's going to be, I, I can't remember how many days it was. Um, but it's going to be like 350 days or something. Let me see. I'll subtract 30, 298 and a half days, right? So the significance there is the, deci the, the number past the decimal. And then we have the king of the south. So the king of the south is 2220. That's going to be south. And then, and the king. So I did this wrong. I made some mistake here. I'm trying to figure out what this is. So I had here, so this is not the phrase, the king of the south. I made some mistake. I was typing in um, uh, this. So so what did I do wrong? It's a good thing I review these things. Um, oh, it's the arms of the south. That's what that is. So this is the arms of the south. That's what I'm doing. I, so I knew I was doing something wrong. So the arms of the south, if we go back here. Um, so the arms of the south, uh, arms is going to be 2220, and south is H5045. And that's going to be 19.89 years, right? And it has a remainder. Now, the remainder, if we put it into time, ends up being 4.26 days, if I'm doing that correctly. So this is 19.89 years, so you can see the symbol for 1989, and then this remainder that's 4.26 days, so you see the April 26th date, okay? Oh, it's hours, okay. I was wondering if I did that right. So 4.26 hours, okay, so it's it's a very smart, small decimal, right? Because it's going to be 
zero, and then this decimal. So that's hours. I, I want to do the calculation, so I'm not going to get everything done that I wanted to do today. But Okay, so we're just taking this number, 7265. So that's adding, that's the arms of the south, and we're going to divide it by 365.25. Whoops, I multiplied it. Let's clear this. 7265 divided by 365.25. And we're going to get this. So you can see the 1989 there, 19.89, so it represents 1989. And then I'm just going to subtract 19.89, and that leaves me with this decimal. Now, you can see the form in which they've written it here is with uh, um, the decimal points moved over four. Right? That's what this E minus four means. You would move the decimal point over. But anyway, so that span of time. Now, if I'm going to to figure out how long that is, uh, normally I would, uh, what would I do? So it's 19.89, so that's years. Wouldn't I multiply that by 365.25? Yeah. And I get this decimal. So that's going to be the number of days. And then I multiply this by 24. And that's going to be the number of hours. There we go. Thank, thanks, Amara. Okay, so that's the number of hours, 4.26 hours. So very significant. Now, if we take, and that's when we were looking at Daniel 11, verse 40. So we have the expression, the king of the north, and the expression of the king of the south. Now, that ends up being, might as well do it here. So 4428 is the word for king. We would multiply that by 2, right? So you get this number. And then we just add the south, the north plus um, 6828, and we get this number. And then we have to add 5045. And so this is the number 20,729. Now, that happens to be the number of days between my birthday and November 9th, 2019. Now, the fact that our birthdays are there, my students' birthdays and mine, it's not proof that our interpretation of anything is correct. And it doesn't give us the authority uh, to say how to understand the scriptures. It's a symbol, right? It's a symbol. And that symbol could be interpreted by other people. So it doesn't give me any sort of authority. It doesn't mean, oh, Theodore's birthday is there, so we need to follow Theodore or Stephen's birthday there, so we follow Stephen, right? It's not what this means. Because people's birthdays are in these lines who are part of this movement. And they end up being used as symbols. Now, the symbol, the primary symbol attached to my birthday, you know, February 6th, of course, you got 62, right? The sixth day of the second month, you got that, that symbol. But really where it's first noted is in the connection to the Mayan calendar and the 777 chiasm. So it's used as a starting point. Now, we already have this connection between November 9th. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Stephen has said that six, four minutes and 4.26 hours is 15,336 sections. So 15,330. So you've got a 1533 with a six at the end. That's kind of interesting. But the fact that my birthday connects to uh, July 18, 2020 is a symbol. My 52nd birthday, dealing with the Mayan calendar. Uh, that is, these are all, all connected. So 52 years. I'm not going to go into that whole structure. But it also points to November 9th. That's part of that, that structure. Just shows that this is a starting point, that we're in this time and that we're, we're recognizing these dates are connected, all connected together. They're all part of a a matrix, right? Or, you know, a garment that's been woven or something like that, right? They're all intertwined with each other. So they're wheels within wheels. So we, we have to accept that all of these symbols are pointing us to our time, 
The question is, how do we interpret them? Right. That's always been uh, the problem with the symbol. Right. People can look at the same symbols. They can look at the same set of facts and draw different conclusions. So so we're just saying that that these this Daniel 11 verse 14 puts us into this history. Now, the way that we've interpreted this verse is uh, that Rome, the papacy, is going to exalt itself. And, and we're looking at this in this civil war. This is from the first day of the first month, 2024, to the first day of the first month in 2030, right? So it's connected to our 7-7 structure, right? Because to the 2520 and all, the, all of this, these other symbols. But that just as Rome or the papacy exalted itself in the 1980s with its connection with Ronald Reagan, that the papacy comes into play a part here again with the attack against Egypt, against wokeism. And we see this already occurring. So we're saying that this establishing of the vision is establishing 1989 to the Sunday law. Now, now the papacy did exalt itself, you know, in 1982. But that would be, we would then look at this and make another application to the beginning of the, of Rome as we relate to how Rome now comes in, right? So we're now dealing with the end of Greece. So now Greece is, it's these civil wars in Greece that are typifying all of these civil wars, um, that have happened, right? And now we have this civil war. Right. So we have the civil war in the United States that's happening, which is typical of a another civil war that's going to happen. Right. So we're not saying that this civil war is the civil war. It, it's it's definitely going to be part of it. But what's happening right now is the civil war between the king of the north and the king of the south in the United States. And, and this is all typical to the Sunday law coming. So we're before the Sunday law. But that whole desolating power, that whole chiasm of the chazon in our history we have to mark from 1989 to the sunday law that's our history that's the vision that's being established in our time so so we're making a, a suggestion or an argument for the idea that if we're going to have the chazon in our history it must refer to that period from 1989 wow. sunday law. that it's not you know, th there's no other place to really place it, but they shall fall, right? So they're going to fall. Rome is close of probation in the seven last plagues. That's what that's pointing to. So we know that Rome's going to do this. Then, then says, so the king of the north, that's Antiochus the third, Republicanism, Republicanism of the U.S. shall come circa 200 B.C. And we're saying that that's April 5th, 2030. That's what we've said in in the past. So whether that's correct or not, we have to decide and cast up a mount, siege, persecution, take the most fenced cities. Uh, and we're going to say that that's Sidon. Now, these are the apostate Protestant churches. So so this is something that uh, the king of the north does. Now, in this history, who is the king of the north? We, we say it's Antiochus the third, but we're. In, in history, right? And we're saying it's republicanism of the U.S. Is that the best way to look at it? Or is there something wrong with how we're looking at this? Because this verse we haven't really gone through and picked through yet. So we're saying that the papacy exalts itself to support Egypt. In that history, the king of the north is going to begin persecution. So that means... This is in connection with the Battle of Paneum. Remember, we go back in these verses. The way that we normally looked at it is the Battle of Raphia is verse 11, right? And then in this history, you're going to have uh, the Battle of Paneum, right? That's going to be a Daniel 11, verse 13, right? So you're going to have that defeat. Right? We looked after this the certain years. Right, the certain years that was um, this period of time from, from September 11th, 2021 to December 25th, 2023 is this 
8,141 days, right? So that's the word 8141 is is this word that is um, years, right? So this is the word years. And then certain is that word that's also translated as times. So it brings us to this history. So that's that's how we interpreted this, right? It's going to bring us to December 25th, 2023 as a symbol, right? So they're going to come after that time with a great army, with much riches. And Antiochus III would defeat Ptolemy V at Epiphanes at the Battle of Paneum, right? So we're saying the Battle of Paneum is still future. Now, in this, when we talk about the Battle of Paneum here and the midnight cry in our history, we're, we're saying it's not, it's not the midnight cry on Jeff's line. That's not the Battle of Paneum on a bigger line. This is just within this typical line. So we're going to have uh, the midnight cry. That's that's how we've looked at this. And then we said in those times, right? So we got the first day of the first month in 2024. So this brings us up to 2023, right? We're saying the Battle of Paneum is going to be in this time because it's it shall co- certainly come after certain years, right? So after December 25th, 2023. Now, Are we time setting when we're doing this? One is we would argue that we're not time setting in contravention of Ellen White's uh, counsel. That is, we're not addressing things on the big line. We're just simply measuring the time. We're watching and waiting. And we're given dates. We're not saying anything specifically happens on those dates. But they're dates that are symbols and they bring us into our present situation. And so, we're saying that whatever the Battle of Paneum is, however it's going to be worked out in this line that we're looking at, we haven't experienced it yet. So so we don't know exactly what this means, but we have these dates, right? We have December 25th, 2023, and we have, you know, April 10th, uh, 2024, right? The first day of the first month. So there must be something that's going to happen in this history that that as it as it happens, we'll understand it more clearly, right? Because we can't predict events. We can just look at these symbols. We can watch and wait. We can measure the time. And then afterwards, we can recognize it was the time, right? That that something that was supposed to happen. And that gives us always light for our feet, because that's what we're looking for here. Okay, so <clears throat> So hopefully that helps kind of get us back up to speed on this. Anything that I'm missing or forgetting about. Okay, so when we look at verse 15, so the king of the north um, shall come and shall cast up a mount. We looked a little bit at at these words, and and that's kind of interesting. Okay, Um, so just a a comment here. I just got a... um, a message on a vi- uh, one of the videos. So it's it's last Thursday's video. And there's a guy named Lindsay Mark Smith. So I don't know who he is. And, and I'm not sure how he does any of this based on what I said. Oh, I see what he's misreading. So he misread it. I said, we haven't got to Daniel 9, 11, 19. Because he has this view that Daniel 11, 19 is referring to... Um, let me see here, is Biden. And Daniel 1120 is Obama. Uh, no, let me see. Trump was Daniel 1119. Biden is Daniel 1120. And Obama is going to be Daniel 1121, right? So I just said we haven't gotten to Daniel 1119. I think he thought that I meant we haven't got to that in history. And we're going to look at what he's saying. So the one thing that we always do is if somebody has an idea or a suggestion, it doesn't matter whether we think the idea is radical or, you know, doesn't fit in with what we, we are saying. We look at it. And why do we do that? 
Why do we look at things that people suggest that don't seem to fit in with our understanding already? Uh, because we've been told to test all the spirit, every spirit. Okay. So, so we test things, right? We test them by God's word. We don't just dismiss something somebody says because it doesn't seem to, in our opinion, fit in what, with what we already understand. So we never just dismiss an idea. But sometimes it can seem like we are um, in that, you know, somebody, sometimes somebody tells me something, some idea they have that I've already studied into very deeply and prayed about and agonized over. And then they present this to me as if I'm hearing it for the first time. And, you know, I maybe spent 40 years studying it. Right. And and I will explain to them from the scriptures why I don't hold that opinion. And then they will say that I'm arrogant and I never looked into it and I don't know what I'm talking about and all those kinds of things. Right. I'm not sure why people would make a judgment about somebody in that way, because I wouldn't. Right? I wouldn't say, well, just because you don't accept my idea, you must be of Satan or something. You know, maybe there's things I don't understand. So. So anyway, we do that. But but the other thing is sometimes there are things that are hidden to our understanding that when we examine them in the light of something we haven't heard of before, that we can notice something that is very significant that we would not have noticed. And so one is, yeah, we always examine everything in the light of scripture, but also because we, our understanding may not be correct or it's only partial. And so only on the surface does it appear that what they're saying is outlandish. And sometimes they are saying things that aren't correct fully, but there's something hidden in there that we need to pay attention to. So we're going to look at what he's he's presenting here. So, uh, you know, and he's, he said like a few comments on there. So people can look at those comments. They're on last Thursday's video. So Lindsay Mark Smith, I don't know if anybody knows who this is, but it just says um, that he was humbled in 2020 and then God gave him, the Holy Spirit said this to him directly after he humbled himself. And so he believes it. Now, of course, if I say the Holy Spirit spoken to me, how do you know whether it's true? You test it, right? We test all the spirits because a spirit may have spoken to me, but it may have not been God's spirit. But I'm not going to dismiss something somebody says just because they say the Holy Spirit spoken to them either, right? Because the Holy Spirit may well have spoken to me. There may be something that we need to look at. But that's what we do when we study. That's the only appropriate way to address any information that comes to us. We test it by God's word. We have to be open to information that comes to us we don't just accept blindly something because it fits in with our understanding and neither do we reject it because it doesn't fit in with our understanding we have to test it and we have to be willing to be corrected so so that's what we've done in this and i believe if a person does that that god can lead them to truth and it doesn't mean that just because even if we have done that that we have all the truth yet Right. But one thing we do know is that new light never contradicts old light. It's an unfolding of it. So that's another thing that needs to guide us. If if something comes along and we say, oh, you know, everything we thought before was wrong about October 22nd, 1844. It wasn't really, you know, a fulfillment of prophecy. Um, Ellen White wasn't really a prophet. We don't need to listen to everything she says it was just for their time and you know god used people in that way but now we can uh, discard october 22nd it was built on all kinds of errors um, if somebody says that if god wasn't leading us he wasn't leading us right i mean I know right that's but but you understand what i mean by that so if we go back and say well october or July 18, 2020, was an error. Well, if God wasn't leading us, then he wasn't leading us, and we should have no trust in anything that anybody in this movement says. You know, that's why when Jeff says, 
Well, everything that came, you know, after 2012 was, was man, you know, adding to uh, the structure, you know, it was all error. Well, Jeff was the one that accepted that error. On what basis would we then accept anything that Jeff has to say after that time, you know, or even during that time or before? You understand what I'm saying? That, you know, God does not lead in this way. There is a continual progress, an unfolding of light that comes to God's people. If somebody says, I believe the Bible, but only the New Testament, they're shooting themselves in the foot, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, they have no basis for their belief in the New Testament if they've rejected the Old Testament. But yet people do this all the time. If you, if, if you, it's an intellectual incongruity to say, I believe in the New Testament, but not the Old Testament. It's an in- intellectual incongruity to say, I believe in what Jeff is teaching today, but I don't accept what, you know, Jeff taught in the past. You know, he was, he was all wrong. But yet everything he's teaching is based on what he taught in the past. It's just a new interpretation of it. It rejects all kinds of things, right? So, so the understanding of truth, you know, we got into this topic because of this um, message, but, and, and we've talked about this before. So primarily God shows us light so that we can develop a Christ-like character. That light is going to expose to us our need of Christ. He's going to show us that we're a sinner, but that we're also loved and that he has the power to work in our lives uh, to overcome sin. Right. That's why light comes to us. It doesn't come to us to um, uh, address our curiosity about things. It doesn't come to us to uh, to puff us up, puff us up. It doesn't come to us to make us. Um, self-dependent. It's meant to have us dependent upon God. And light always brings trials, right? So God, light cannot come to us and just, you know, be welcomed with open arms and have no impact upon our life and how we see ourselves and, and what we're going to experience. It's going to bring trials, right? There are people in this world who don't appear to have trials, but they also have no light. You know, like the wicked. There's many people who are wicked. And they just seem to have a great life. And they probably think they have a great life. But if, if the light comes to them and then they start to accept it, what happens to them? Trials. Right? So that's the purpose of light. That's why we're studying these things. To develop a Christ-like character. And it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or says. We know that we're sinners, and that um, our character needs to be changed. So that's that's what we focus upon. Okay, so um, so when we get back to this verse, <clears throat> verse fifteen. So the king of the north. So we have that that number, right? And we're saying that that number uh, of those two, they have a significant prophetically. So that's going to be um, the 30 years, right? Now, the 30 years, we already have a symbol. That's from 1989 to 2019. Now, if we uh, take that number of days, so we have the 30 years in the decimal, it doesn't bring us, as far as I know, to a significant date, right? So when I go back to 1989, November 9th, 1989, and I count the 30 years and the 0.8172 days, which was, uh, we already figured out how many days that was. was, I'm just going to do this again. So 11,256 divided by 365.25. It's 30 years. Minus 30. That was like 300 and no, 298 and a half days, right? 
So if I count from, from this, from that date, November 19, 1989, I'm going to count 11,256 days. It just brings me to September 3rd, 2020. It doesn't bring me to a significant date. You know, maybe there's some other way I could look at that as a span of time, you know, from some other date, right? Um, if I go to, uh, if I add, if I go from not November 9th, 1989, but I go from December 25th, 1989, and I count uh, that span of time, so 11,256 days, it brings me to Tishri 23 in 2022, which is October 19th, 2022. Now, maybe that's significant. It's a Wednesday. I don't remember anything in particular that happened on that day, October 19th, 2022. That was a little over a year ago on that date. You know, we we, were, we probably had a morning study where we were addressing something. It's going to be just before uh, the midterm elections, a couple of weeks before that. So maybe there's something in that study. But 723 is a symbol, right? Tishri 23 is 723. And it's, it's basically the, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, right? If you count how they, they count the Feast of Tabernacles. Sort of like the day after, but they add this extra day, right? So there's eight days for the Feast of Tabernacles, and then they have this extra day at the end. So that's, so I don't know if that means anything. But anyway, as a symbol, it's this 30 years. Okay. So now we have uh, the king of the north in verse 15 shall come and cast up a mount. Now, what did we what did we say this mount was? We said it's the siege, the persecution. What was that based on? So so we got Antiochus, right, is the king of the north, Republican in the U.S. shall come. So this is circa 200 B.C. So that's going to be in connection with the Battle of Paneum. We put that as April 5th, 2030, whether that's correct or not. But that's what we did. So he's going to come and cast up a mount. Okay, so the mount has the number 5550. And we're going to start looking at this in a bit more detail. So 5550, that's 5,550. Now, that's a symbol, a triplet of fives, which five is a symbol of the wives of virgins. You know, it's 15.19 years. I don't know if there's any place that we could put that in as a span. Now he's going to cast up a mount. That's eight, two, one, zero. Now, if we add these two together, we get 13,760. So I don't think we've done this calculation yet. It gives us 37 years and uh, a bit over half a year. So it's going to be 37 years and 246 days. <clears throat> Okay, so if we were going to, um, so this is the number 13,760. I think we might have addressed this. If we go, at least I, I think I looked at it. So if we go from this June 7th, 1982, and we count this 13,760, does that make sense? Yeah, so that's going to bring me to February 8th, 2020. Um, so there must be some other date I was looking at. Okay, so I can't remember what I did with that. So I think I was connecting it in some way with this, because um, what we were looking at is this history of the Pope. So Reagan... And John Paul II. So that's what I think this has to do with. So we know the first time they meet um, is going to be June seventh, nineteen eighty-two. Now they're going to meet also on June sixth, nineteen eighty-seven. Yeah, this is it. So this is going to be the second time they meet. So. It's going to be five years later. So from the time they first meet to the time they meet again is 
1825 days. Would have been nice if it was 1827, but, <laughs> and I guess I should show you what I'm doing here. Yeah. So here's what it does. Okay. So, so we have these times that the Pope's, Pope meets. So we're going to have June 7th, 1982. And, and that's going to be connected back to, uh, the siege where the Pope is taken captive, when the city's taken captive, he's going to be taken captive four days later. But that's going to be uh, 187 prophetic years to so June 7th, 1982. Now they're going to meet again on 6-6, June 6th, 1987. And that's going to be, you know, 1825 days later. Now, if I count from that date, this number. So the number that we're using is the numbers relating to uh, cast up amount. Okay. So that's A210 and 5550. And those are going to add up to 13,760. So I'm going to count from that date, right? June 7th. Oh, let me go to June 6th. Pardon me. June 6, 1987. And what date do I get? So what is that date? So it's my 62nd birthday. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, so my second 62nd birthday is it's attached to the seventh day of the 11th month. We know 11, seven, we've come to understand that as a symbol of July 18. But, you know, I mean, we can make a prediction. On February 6, 2025, I'll turn 62 if I'm still alive, right? So, but that's all we can predict about that. It's not telling us, it's giving us a symbol. Now, my 62nd birthday, of course, the symbol of February 6th is 62, right? Sixth day of the second month. So it's my 62nd birthday. It's tied to these lines, just like Stevens is. Um. But the fact that my birthday shows up is kind of interesting because I have another one. We already looked at one with my birthday. So, um, so what do we do with this? What is that telling us? This casting up amount. I thought the, the 6th of June, 1987. Yeah. That is, uh, six days just before that tear down this wall speech. Okay. So if you go from the tear down this wall speech and you do an in inclusive count, it would come to you your birthday in 2025. Is that how that would work? Would add. No, that would go the other way. Never mind. <laughs> I'd have to subtract, not add. Okay. So, um, so this casting up of amount, I, I just got to put these numbers in here. We're going to run out of time here pretty soon. We actually have run out of time. So I'll do this later. Okay. So we're kind of in the midst of, of all this analysis. So we don't want to forget about it. We want to look at it. I know, you know, people will notice things I didn't notice. But the reason we're doing this, you know, because there's been criticisms. Why are you spending so much time on all these numbers and symbols? You know, because uh, you're going to still be studying this long after Jesus came back. You're never going to get it done. Because, you know, the Sunday law is imminent and you're not studying the right things. But God's definitely leading in this study. And so we need to trust that God knows what he's doing. So, you know, today is December 21st. That was back 11 years ago today on our calendar at the Mayan calendar. You know, 13th of Octune is marked there. 13 decimal, zero decimal, zero decimal, zero decimal, zero. I think I got four zeros. Right. It's the day I met Heidi. Right. So. Uh, so it's uh, 11 years. Um, so these dates, these symbols, they're important. We need to pay attention to them. They're giving us light. They're telling us things about what it is we're studying. And we're going to continue doing this and go wherever God leads. OK, so let's close in prayer. 
Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the, the study this morning and for the studies coming up this weekend. And um, we just ask that uh, you can help us uh, to follow and serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.